Okay, class, this is uh, your test review uh, for my Delphi University students, exam number two. Uh, it's going to cover skin and bones, 55 questions, multiple choice, matching, maybe true and false. So uh, let's run through this review for you. Um, make sure you go over the uh, basic concept of the skin and its functions as well as um, the integumentary system, what it's composed of, and uh, what percentage of the body that the integumentary system uh, makes up. I'd know all the layers of the skin, so if I ask you all the following or layers of the skin except for which one, uh, you can uh, figure that out. I would also know the difference between the uh, epidermis and the dermis and what tissues you find in each of them. I'd know the different types of skin cells, go over the keratinocytes, melanocytes, Merkel cells, and Langerhans cells, and I'd know their functions. I'd know the layers that you'll find in the epidermis, all the stratum layers from superficial to deep or deep to superficial. And then there are five different stratum layers, especially where you have the thicker skin, like in the palms of the hand and the soles of the feet. Um, you're going to have about six questions, six or seven questions on those five layers. So at least one question from each layer for sure, and on maybe two of them you may get a second follow-up question, okay? So at least five to seven questions on the stratum layers. Um, I know the difference between the skin being waterproof and water resistant. What happens uh, if you're in pool water compared to ocean water and, uh, and why that is. I know how long it takes for skin cells to get from that germative layer or the stratum basal layer. Moving up to the stratum corneum, how long that takes. and what can happen if it's, uh, if it's accelerated, what type of um, skin conditions develop as a result of that. I would know where you find the uh, accessory structures of the skin, where we find the glands and the nerves and the capillaries uh, and the hair follicle and the erector pili muscles. Um, I'd know about dermatitis, I'd know where it takes place, whether it takes place in the dermis or epidermis, and then the two different layers, papillary and reticular, please review them. You'll have about one question of each one of the papillary region, one in the reticular region. Skin pigmentation, you're going to have two, four, five, about eight questions. So those are straightforward, very easy. Make sure you review what cyanosis is, what jaundice is, hemoglobin, keratin, melanin, uh, freckles, albinism, vitiligo. Those will make some nice matching sections on that. Know the glands, uh, sweat gland, oil gland, wax gland. I'd also know what their uh, AKAs are. If I ask you what is sediferous, what is ceruminous, what is sebaceous, you'll be familiar with that. <clears throat> I'd also know what acne is. And uh, there's something else, I don't know if I mentioned it in class, um, but in terms of the skin, we're going to talk about this when we do neurology, but when we do the skin, uh, some people get this abnormal sensation to the skin. We call it paresthesia, but it's a neurological phenomenon, and people can experience this abnormal sensation to different parts of the body. And there is a relationship to a neurological mapping of the skin. We call it dermatomes. When we get into neurology, we'll talk about dermatomes, myotomes, and sclerotomes. If someone has an abnormal sensation to their shoulder up in here, 
that's a C5 dermatome. There's a part of the neck, that C5 nerve, that can lead to an abnormal sensation here. If it's here to these two digits, that's C6. We call it the six shooter. C7, that's right. I know you laughed at that. C7 is the birdie. Someone has abnormal sensation to the middle digit, that's the C7 dermatome. C8, these two digits to the medial aspect of the forearm, that's the C8 dermatome. And then just lay your hand down right there, inside of the elbow is T1, and then T2, PU. Okay, let's do that again. C5, C6, C7, C8, T1, dermatome, T2. So if someone's experiencing numbness or tingling to the thumb or index finger, there could be a problem at the C6 nerve root in the neck. Some sort of impingement or subluxation there creating that. Numbness and tingling to the middle digit, now we're looking at C7. These two digits could be C8. Now remember there's only eight cervical vertebrae, but there are eight cervical nerve roots. That's called a dermatome. You have the same thing of the lower extremity. All right, we'll get into that in a little bit more detail with neurology, but I want you to understand the concept of this neurological mapping of the skin uh, called dermatomes, okay, with an M, not an N, not dermatone, dermatome. Um, and the nails go through all the different um, conditions that we spoke about, spooning of the nails, clubbing of the nails, brittle nails, um, bows lines, the vertical ridges, the pitting of the nails, make sure you go through that and what they can indicate. Um, in terms of bone, go over rank and rankle. R-A-N-K, rank, and rankle, R-A-N-K-L. It stands for receptor activated nuclea kappa and receptor activated nuclea kappa ligand. It's that coupling mechanism of osteoblast to osteoclast activity. Go to Google Images, take a good look at that, know where you find rank and where you find rankle and how they work together to regulate bone remodeling. Um, know the different parts of long bone, diaphysis, epiphysis, metaphysis. I know the different bone cells, the, osteo, um, the osteoprogenitor cells, also known as um, osteogenic cells, uh, the osteoclasts, osteocytes, osteoblasts, make sure you go through all of them. There's four different bone cells. Uh, know their functions. I know about the osteon, difference between spongy bone and compact bone, the different parts of an osteon. I know the different types of fractures. I would also make sure you know the different types of bones, the long bones, short bones, flat bones, and irregular bones, and be able to give examples of each. That'll make a nice matching section. Um, we spoke about some of the hormones and what can go wrong with growth uh, in terms of human growth hormone, too much or too little. I know about uh, T4 and thyroxine, too much and too little. The relationship between the thyroid gland and the parathyroid gland. Um, the thyroid gland using calcitonin, parathyroid gland using parathyroid hormone, and how they're used together to regulate uh, calcium homeostasis and why we calcium homeostasis is important, what are the different functions of it. Um, osteoporosis and bone density, what's good for bone development, what's bad, what can leach out calcium from the bones. Um, make sure you know the difference between acromeglia, rickets, osteoporosis, first, second, and third degree burns, rules of nine to figure out what percentage of the body is burned, and then UVA, UVB uh, rays, and what, uh, why, which ones are detrimental, which ones are harmful, which ones are needed, and for what reason. Okay, so I hope you find that helpful. Watch this, take notes on it, talk with your other classmates about these topics. I think that's the best way to learn. Don't just memorize, sit and talk about it. You'll always remember a conversation you have with a friend or a classmate rather than your own notes. Okay, so I want to see you all do well. Bye now.